All right, so naturally, I have to talk about climate change with you. You're a big denier, am I mistaken? <laughs> Maybe I'll switch over that. Maybe yeah. there's a big payday in that. I can really cash out. <laughs> yeah, let's get some headlines here. Yeah. All right, so climate change. I can't believe that in 2015, still, when you watch cable news and whenever they're talking about climate change, they still bring on two people to debate it as if it's in a, a debate. You know what I mean? It's not a debate. The scientific community, give me a percentage here. What is it? Something like 91% of scientists? It's 97% is the number that I've heard. Okay, so 97%. Uh, I'm not a mathematician, but that's a pretty high percentage. Yet they still have these people debating. What, what do you think's going on there? For, we'll talk about the media part in a sec, but just in terms of how people can deny something that science is consistently proving. There's a the lack theory? of understanding. There's people just dug in. There's several lawmakers, I think, don't believe it anymore, who still say that they're deniers, but they're really not. But we just don't know how to break them out of jail together. You yeah. can't break them out one at a time. They'll be shot by the, the prison guards. So like they're, they're almost held out, hostage by their constituents. They're held that hostage tricked, by their, and their beliefs that they're dug yeah. in. They don't know how to... It needs to be a jailbreak where you break all seven or nine of them out together somehow. Yeah. We've got to figure out how to get them all out so they can just, you know, there'd be safety in numbers if you could do that. Yeah. I don't think they all believe it. And they can't, you can't believe it anymore. There's just enough uh, very good uh, science, scientific clues as to the fact it's not only happening, but man is the number one culprit. Yeah. If you add more CO2 to the atmosphere, it warms up the planet. It's always done that. And we have much more CO2 than we've ever had. So to, den to deny that that's happening and have all this stuff about it's, you know, what's happening on Mars and all this stuff, it's all background noise. Yeah. It's really good science. People say, well, Galileo was a rogue and he had a different theory and he was persecuted. You're persecuting us. No, Galileo had science. He saw, he got a telescope, primitive by today's standards, but looked over the, holy Christ, there's Ganymede and Io and Callisto and Europa, and they're going around <laughs> Jupiter. I can see it. They're in different positions. They're right. clearly moving around Jupiter. Right. I can see it. Copernicus and Galileo use science, and so to, to use that, we, we embrace this denial at our own peril. Yeah. And right now, whatever we do now, it is my opinion that there will be great damage done to like the Marshall Islands in South Florida, what have you. That's in the pipeline. Mm -hmm. The time to stop that was back in the 90s. Yeah. If we had taken the action that was recommended and pleaded for and begged for, the, perhaps we could have done something with that. But now we're 2015, people are still debating it and they're not willing. There's a lot of money obviously in fossil fuels still. And the people who have interest in fossil fuels want to squeeze the last dollar out. And people kid themselves. I don't think everybody goes, I don't care that I'm ruining the planet. I'm going to do this. And I don't think a lot of people even think that. I, I think they think, I've heard some sci people are in denial, like the alcoholic in denial. Yeah. They think, no, I I'm not doing anything with to make climate change. They're wrong about that. And I need to keep people warm and healthy and what have you and transport goods and services around. I'm doing a good thing. And people lie to themselves about stuff. It's like an alcoholic. We're all alcoholics on oil. We yeah. really are. <laughs> yeah. And so the alcoholic goes, it's that damn boss of mine that caused me that problem. He was such a bastard. That's why I got fired. And that bitch of a wife, mm -hmm. the reason I got a divorce is because, and that cop, that was a crazy, badge heavy cop. That, it was a cop. It was the wife. It was the boss. It's never yourself. And we're the addicts like that. Right. We, we want to deny that it's, that it's fossil fuels that's doing this because it's such a wonderful thing. I ride my bike up Laurel Canyon to Mulholland regularly. And it takes a lot of work, David. Yeah. But if you can just do this and get to the top of Mulholland, that's all the effort I did, yeah. just this. Yeah. Not pedaling up for 20 minutes up the top of Mulholland, just went like that. And I get up to the top of Mulholland, it's like, what a miracle. <laughs> and to plow your fields, you used to get the oxen, you had to uh -huh. get animals to help you with the work and get an ox, a team of oxen and go through the fields and hang on to the thing yourself. It was like this, and it was a lot of work to, to till a field by hand is tremendous work. Suddenly they got these contraptions that will till it for you, mm -hmm. a machine. This goes to what we were talking about before, about how far we are from our food and how easily we can get everything and the phones that we're, it's all sort of interlaced and sort of takes the responsibility away from us in so many ways. Yeah, it's a free lunch that we thought would go on forever and never had a price tag. You know, nobody ever thought there would be something like climate change. There was a brief, a very brief theory from the scientific community in the 60s 
about global cooling. Yeah. It didn't get much play because it didn't really make any sense, you know, but it lasted about a year or two. All it made was a cover of Popular Science magazine. Mm -hmm. It didn't really make peer-reviewed studies like it has, like uh, global warming has, but it lasted a while. People have been in denial about it a long time. And then when James Hansen started to testify at the guy from NASA in the 80s, a lot of the scientific community, indeed people who were had embraced the global cooling thing briefly, uh, they were like, wait a minute, this makes more sense. Let me look at the numbers. And they looked at the numbers, and one by one they were convinced. There's very few people left who think it's not happening, scientists who think it's not happening. Consider it in the medical community, though, David. You go to a doctor, and he says, Ed, you got a problem. You have cancer. You've got to get chemo or radiation or something right away. Thank you. Go to another doctor. Ed, you have cancer. You, have, you need chemo or radiation or something, some treatment like that right away. I'm going to go, the, the last three doctors tell you you're fine. You're going to go with the last three? You're going to go with the 97 who told you of that you're, you need cancer treatment. Right, and you can't say, well, I don't believe in cancer, thus it doesn't exist. You can say is, it well, you can at say your own it. peril. <laughs> right, you can say it at your own peril. And that's where we're at now. So what would you say to all the people, because this is one of the things I hear a lot from Republicans. They'll say, well, America, what, what we put out there now, it's unfair for us to say it to other countries because we've been through our industrial revolution already. Right. So we can't tell India to what to do right now or a lot of you know, places in that part of the world. We can't tell them they have to do it because they're going through what we did. You know what I mean? Like, so that there's a sort of uh, self-importance yeah. here. We have to help those other countries leapfrog over that old technology. We built our Brooklyn Bridge and Empire State Building with high sulfur coal and steel mills you know, in Pittsburgh polluting the air. That's what we did. We yeah. did that. Now, you don't have to do that again. I remember kind of waking up to the idea of leapfrogging over old technology. Back in the 90s, I went to Australia, and in Australia in the 90s, everybody had a cell phone. Homeless people had cell phones. <laughs> it was somehow very cheap there with the way they put up the repeaters and everything quickly, or they had mm -hmm. subsidies for them. I don't know what. They had it because they leapfrogged over the whole thing. There's, there's such a vast country, and they certainly had phone lines in <laughs> Australia, but the idea of stringing new lines everywhere and getting telephone lines all throughout the outback and every part of Australia, no. Cell repeaters, they leapfrogged over the old te technology. Yeah. We have to help them do that with solar. The people in these poor villages, they need light in their hut right now because they're knocking over kerosene lamps and getting burned and they're carrying kerosene great distances, carrying you know, uh, firewood, taking down the last tree, uh, you know, carrying firewood great distances. We can help them with solar panels and solar ovens. You leapfrog over the old technology. Yeah. And now that doesn't work for everything in places like China who want to manufacture all sorts of goods and what have you. You have to do other things, but they're realizing the problem now in Beijing because of the, la the lost productivity from the air pollution there. Yeah, we've they, done stories on that town. I forget the name of the town with the smog. So that polluted. Yeah, it's just beyond imagination. And they're starting to see the unfortunate side effect of it. It's not just that people were unhappy, they're losing productivity. Why didn't you show up for work again today? I was in the hospital, I was in the pulmonary clinic. Yeah. I couldn't breathe, I have emphysema, I have cancer, I'm dying of cancer from the pollution. That's why I missed work, I'm very sorry. Yeah, so maybe that's what'll get them because they do love productivity. So eventually if the productivity really starts going down, maybe that then causes some uh, they're put, change. They're putting up plenty of coal plants, I'm not suggesting they aren't, but they're putting up many, many more solar manufacturing plants than we are. Yeah. They're really, doubling down on, uh, on solar as well, and wind, and we need to export a lot of our good American technology for them in a number of ways, clean air issues and, and others. I think they can benefit from what we've learned. Hey, a little bit of good news today, folks. You hear yeah. a lot of bad news. Here's some good news. From 1970 to date, when I started in this, we have four times the cars in LA, millions more people. Now here comes the good news. We have a fraction of the smog. Yeah. Because we did it. We did that. You and I and everybody yeah. here in LA did that, David, because of catalytic converters on cars, combined cycle gas turbines, spray paint booths, all the things big and small, cleaning up the ports of uh, San Pedro and Long Beach, you know, plugging those boats in instead of having them running in the harbor. All that stuff big and small that we did all worked. So we need to export that great technology to China and India and have them use it and to clean up the air in these cities and have them uh, be better world stewards, you know, for climate change. Yeah, I like that you're bringing these all around to something actually positive, which you barely ever hear when we talk about these environmental issues. Anyway, what do you think? Let us know in the comments right down below.